everyone. I'm Aarti Nagaraj, editor of Gulf Business, and a very, very warm welcome to today's session hosted by Gulf Business in partnership with Gigamon. Firstly, I hope all of you are staying safe during these very uncertain times. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic, and I know we've been discussing about this nonstop, but it's dramatically altered the way we do business. For a lot of companies, this has meant a sudden shift to remote working, which has put a lot of strain on IT infrastructure. Um, the timeline for digital transformation has shortened dramatically. And what has also happened is that issues like cybersecurity have come to the fore. Now, on the other hand, you also have a problem of tight budgets. A lot of companies are unable to invest on technology right now. And so they are in a tough spot. So how can organizations um, keep pace or even respond to the evolving situation when it comes to digital transformation? Also, what can they do to prepare themselves for the future? Now, to understand more on this topic, we have with us today um, Vijay Babar. He's the Senior Channel Manager, Middle East and Africa at tech firm Gigamon, as well as Miraj Mohammed, Performance Management Consultant at Riverbed. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we get started with today's session, just a quick reminder of the format and the facilities. So you all have a Q&A option on your screen. So any questions that you have during the session, feel free to post them. Uh, we'll try to take them on during the discussion if they're relevant. If not, we also have time for a dedicated Q&A time at the end of the discussion. We'll also have a poll in between and more details will be shared during the discussion. Also, please follow Gus Business on all our social media channels. We are at Gus Business on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and at Gus Business Magazine on Instagram. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Vijay. Thank you, Arti, and thank you, everyone who's joined. Um, obviously, we want to keep everybody as involved as possible throughout this session. So um, as Arti has just mentioned, if you can put any questions through the Q&A option, and then we'll try our best to answer as many as we can after the poll questions. Um, and on the poll questions, again, just for your involvement, um, we're going to throw a couple of questions during the presentation. Um, Nothing trivial, nothing difficult. It'll be a yes or no, or a, a choice of multiple choice questions. Um, if you could answer them, um, and what we'll do at the end is the answers or the, the users that participated will go into a poll, uh, and at the end of the session, we'll draw out two names. Um, we will win a $50 Amazon gift voucher. So without further ado, let me just share my screen. So here's the agenda. I'll, I'll just quickly give you a quick introduction. My name is Vijay Babar. Um, as Arti uh, um, uh, mentioned earlier, I manage the channel for Gigamon in the Middle East and Africa. Um, so I'd like to spend the next 15 to 20 minutes sort of covering the impact of COVID-19 in the digital transformation drive. Um, a little bit on who Gigamon is um, and how we can help you be ready for the new tomorrow. Um, so without further ado, let me move into my first slide. This slide, I'm sure many of you have seen something similar. I used this slide about three months ago for another webinar that I was hosting. Um, and reading it now, the message has been pretty damn accurate, right? The next five years of your digital transformation will happen in the next five months if it hasn't already started. And the likelihood for many of you and the many of the companies that you represent, the digital transformation journey has already begun. COVID-19 was pretty much just a catalyst to accelerate the digital transformation forward by a few years. This pandemic hit every organization by surprise, right? No CEO ever saw this coming. Many were, and many still are, affected in different ways. And those who were in the phase of planning the digital transformation strategy, probably over the next few years, had to suddenly re-strategize everything to happen in a few weeks. And it may sound like a bit of an exaggeration, but it really was the case, right? When we used to talk about digital transformation, pre-COVID-19, we usually talked about it in terms of growth and obviously extending the ways in which we interacted with our customers, our business partners, and our employees. We also planned it to be a medium to long-term process, allowing us time to assemble the expertise and tools that we needed. But what we've learned in the past months is that digital transformation isn't necessarily a planned process. It's a process that's been forced upon us by unforeseen circumstances, and it's pretty much adapt now or die process for many, many organizations. So what do organizations 
need to do to ensure that they survive, maybe even thrive in the next phase of their revolution? Before answering that, let's think about where we are right now, where we are today, where we will be tomorrow, and pretty much where we were yesterday. With COVID-19, it's still an unknown threat to society, right? Nobody can predict when the pandemic will phase out and when it's going to die out and when we're going to get more spikes. Organizations need to ensure that they're well prepared for any future similar like waves that they may have to incur. This is a bit of a wordy slide, right? There's a lot of words here. Feel free to read through it. I'm going to give you guys a, a, a bit of a highlight on what we're seeing in the market um, due to the impact of the COVID-19. And as you can see, it's pretty much broken into three sort of phases, right? Three segments. Organizations may have slightly different phases, but all in all, the points I'm going to cover now would be pretty common for many. Okay. First phase, um, which many of us are now out of, was about accelerating the digital transformation overnight. Okay. What organizations had planned originally, like I mentioned earlier, for the next couple of years was now literally pushed into a week or two weeks. And COVID-19 had suddenly created new challenges on the IT infrastructure. They had to support remote work and other business critical applications. Um, they were under pressure. You know, they had to scale up the remote technologies the network infrastructures. And this sudden change resulted in network communication coming under you know, really significant constraints as it now had to traverse external networks. The scale, the performance, the security was never built to serve this so-called new world. Okay? And overnight, IT had to implement rapid network and tool modifications, raising new security, resiliency, and performance concerns. And, and those organizations that had already embraced digital transformation were in a better position than those who had not, as they were pretty much unable to cope with the sudden remote network demands, you know, things that resulted in VPN congestions, just unable to access network resources, outages from network or application performance related issues. Network operations, information security teams had to deal with all this and at the same time maintain network availability, performance and user experience. And they had to ensure their networks were secure as more and more attacks and breaches were on the rise. And they had to do all this with little to zero budget. And over the coming weeks, it's becoming more and more common to see organizations having to resize and lay off staff to meet savings plans, or in some cases, you know, organizations having to fold up entirely. Today, it's all about stability and optimization. Many organizations have pretty much made the shift over the last four months and have reconfigured their network infrastructure, and they've adapted their security to today's new model. Right? And from an IT perspective, many organizations, should I say for many organizations, the COVID-19 crisis seems like it's over. But the return to the old working conditions or the old working model is far from over. Whether organizations try to get back to their old operating model or seek to take advantage of this crisis you know, to innovate and maybe reimagine a new, more effective operating model, it's still going to be a prolonged process for many. As an example, let's take, uh, let's, let's take a couple of minutes, right, and talk about a few key verticals, pretty much in, in every country, in every region. Let's talk about government, let's talk about finance, let's talk about the healthcare, and even talk about education industries, right? They were all hit hard during the pandemic. And now they need to be at the forefront to help begin stabilizing the economy. You know, they're under overwhelming pressure to change and they've got a great upside if they succeed. Look at local governments, they're all gonna to have to play critical roles in this phase and their IT systems will need to adapt and become much more responsive to, become business, to, to people and businesses. The healthcare industry could bring about positive changes too. For example, digital transformation processes such as e-health or e-medicine or e-doctors will probably become the standard in the next generation of healthcare. Such technologies have the potential to drive down cost, increase accessibility and convenience, and, and improve the outcomes for patients. Like the healthcare, the financial services industry was already in the midst of digital transformation way before COVID-19, but now they have to act faster to accelerate it. Another example, take the millions and millions of people that have been made redundant during this pandemic. For survival, they're daily checking their available funds on their phones or online, you know, checking their bank accounts, checking their loans, checking their credit cards, checking their credit reports. And this has kind of resulted in an overwhelming burden to the call centers. You know, many of them have had to rush to cloud-based self-service models to cope with their huge inquiries. Bank branch visits have declined. Mobile banking has massively increased. 
But for those of you who have children, you know, you may agree the study from home may well have more profound effects on the educational system than the work for home has had in the workplace. Some higher education institutes had already begun making investments in remote learning, but for the majority of schools, they were not ready for this sudden study from home and had to make drastic changes to the learning system. The new e-learning model may well become you know, the go-to approach for many ed educational institutes, um, either on a permanent basis or as schools go back to a phase basis and maybe move into a mixed in-school and e-learning curriculum. And just like work from home or e-learning, e-medicine, e-banking, these are all going to have, or should I say, these are all going to drive a higher network traffic consumption and demands for higher and more secure bandwidth. But whatever the industry, most IT organizations worldwide will be facing budget uncertainty, right? Along with higher traffic volumes as they process into their, or should I say, as they progress into their digital journey. They'll need to become more agile and they'll need to do more with what they have. It's very important for organizations to be on the path to future-proof their IT networks, providing greater security, better application performance, and faster troubleshooting. And the new tomorrow, or the third phase, is, in a lot of cases, about maintaining just that, as well as implementing a business continuity plan to include actions and processes in the event of another global pandemic. Organizations need the agility to respond quickly, cost-effectively to new and unforeseen challenges. It's imperative to ensure security and continuity of operations while redeploying network resources to maintain the highest level of customer and internal user experience. They need to ensure their IT infrastructure are ready and the resources and budgets are in place to ensure network security remains at the highest level and that all best practices have been implemented with zero downtime to maintain organizational effect. All organizations will need visibility and agility to survive. So these are just some of the challenges facing organizations as they move forward. And Gigamon can help with a lot of these challenges um, that they're going to face on this road to digital transformation. So before I continue to the next slide to sort of discuss who is Gigamon, what we do, I think we should put up a poll question um, for you guys to answer. Have a quick think about this poll question uh, and, and give us your thoughts on that. And as you guys think about the answers, I'll just talk to you about what, who Gigamon is. For those of you who are not familiar with Gigamon, we pretty much provide network visibility on all traffic across your physical, your virtual, and your cloud infrastructures to solve critical security and performance needs. Basically, bring you up to drive digital transformation and adapt to the rapidly changing market conditions that we've currently seen and more likely to see for the next year or so. I'll spend a couple of minutes just to go over the complexity uh, of what we're seeing in this new tomorrow and, and to meet the challenges and opportunities of this new tomorrow, or tomorrow should we say, um, let's first try to understand where we are today and where we were, let's say yesterday, right? Networks have grown increasingly complex with more users, more applications, more devices than ever before. Endpoint security inside and outside your traditional, your traditional network is now pretty much top priority, right? And it should remain top priority. Cloud adoption, it's on the increase, you know, ensuring that deployed applications are secure, they're scalable and correctly integrated with your existing legacy systems, that's a challenging task. High traffic volumes, you know, they're creating more challenges as applications demand more bandwidth. Existing network and performance management and security tools are unable to cope with these heavy traffic demands. 90, 80 to 90%, let's say, of traffic passing into your organization is encrypted. And unless you have costly, powerful tools to decrypt the traffic, it's usually passed non-inspected. Budget cuts as well, you know, they've resulted in no new tool spend, leaving IT organizations teams to have to work with what they have, with the existing tools which are pretty much running inefficiently um, and reaching their maximum thresholds. And these tools are unable to keep up with the performance and security needs of the new tomorrow. And you know, on average, organizations, let's say around 60%, are seeing more east-west traffic than north-south. And changes in remote policies, you know, what, what drove the, the LAN traffic based to VPN, these are causing more and more challenges to, to the remote policies. With these changes and the early adoption in digital transformation, um, 
accurate visibility into your traffic is critical. You need to know exactly what's happening so not to miss any opportunity or threat. And you need a way to resolve this complexity and get back control over your network and security. And that's where Gigamon Visibility Fabric was built to do. Gigamon, in a nutshell, we provide an abstraction layer between the physical virtual cloud network and the performance and security tools that manage it. Okay? And by decoupling the network performance and security tools from the network, we not only solve conflicts of interest between network operations and security operations teams, but we provide 100% vis visibility in all your data in motion. Let that be on-premise DC, let that be remote, let that be virtual, cloud, container-based, and we intelligently optimize it and we feed the right traffic to your network performance and security tools so that they can perform to their maximum potential. Hidemon provides access to the traffic in, you know, in, in different changing infrastructures. You know, we allow analytic tools to accurately perform functions like capacity replanning, identifying critical traffic, optimizing bandwidth usage, et cetera. Um, and by aggregating and redirecting the traffic to your security tools, you not only monitor your ingress and egress and your east-west traffic, but we also give you this fundamental layer to a zero trust concept. You know, pretty much a company shouldn't be automatically trusting anything inside or outside their perimeters and must verify everything before granting access. The Gigamon, provides three essential elements, or should I say three essential layers to address all the challenges that I've just discussed for today or tomorrow or the new tomorrow, whatever you want to call that, okay? And the first layer is the access layer. This is where all network traffic or all network data must be accessible regardless of whether it's on physical, virtual, or a cloud platform. The next layer um, we call the aggregation layer, okay? This is where the data from the network is brought together, it's aggregated, it creates a consistent view of all of the data in, in motion in your network. And the final layer is the transformation layer. Okay, this is where the data that we collect is transformed, it's enhanced, and it's sent out to your tools for them to do their metrics and analysis. If you recall earlier, I spoke about optimizing and making the best out of what you have, right? In other words, doing more with less. With budget cuts, you can now extend the lives of your existing tools that you have by addressing bandwidth limitations, okay? For example, if your current network tools are still running on 10 gig ports and you upgrade your network to 100 gig, you can still use your current tools without facing any. So with remote working, there's been an expanded use on teleconferencing applications like Zoom, like WebEx, like Skype, and there's also been an even greater use of media applications like Netflix, like Amazon Prime, like OSN, and bandwidth is at an even greater premium. On application visualization allows info security teams to quickly identify all applications running on your network and the bandwidth that they're consuming as well, allowing you to take the relevant action. Along with Gigamon's flow mapping technology, um, slicing and deduplication allows you to dramatically reduce low risk, irrelevant and duplicate traffic, hence improving and maximizing your existing tools efficiency as well. Gigamon application metadata simplifies, incident, simplifies your incident detection and response time by providing your tools with contextual meaningful information about the network and the application traffic that's pretty much either difficult or impossible to obtain otherwise. And Gigamon application intelligence, it takes this efficiency effectiveness one level higher by automatically identifying over 3,200 applications in the network, allowing IT to prioritize those which are relevant and ignore those which are not, hence optimizing your network performance and security tools to monitor and inspect only what is needed. Centralizing TLS SSL decryption with Gigamon allows traffic to be decrypted once and shared across multiple tools before re-encryption. Without SSL decryption, the network performance and security tools won't be able to process a sheer volume of encrypted data crossing the network, hence unable to identify malicious traffic quickly and efficiently. So just to sort of summarize, as organizations, infrastructures grow increasingly complex, Gigamon provides this complete end-to-end -end visibility on all your traffic to ensure that these organizations can run fast and stay secure, optimize the current tools that they have, optimize their teams and their business efficiency and performance in even the most challenging times. 
But before I finish, you know, I want to share some results from a, from a, a report commissioned from a leading analyst firm called the Enterprise Strategy Group. The results were consistently showing that Gigamon, or shall I say, a Gigamon platform is critical for success in today's digital age. Customers who deploy Gigamon recognize benefits, including you know, a 75% increase in network visibility, which led to a 50% reduction in network downtime, a 70% reduction in false positives, and even 50% reduction in hardware tooling costs, and a decrease in infrastructure complexity. So far, I've mentioned the need for visibility and access to your traffic, to your tools for better efficiency and optimization. Now I'm going to pass it over to one of Gigamon's ecosystem tool vendors, Riverbed, who are on the receiving side of the packets. Though. So basically they require the packets which we send to them for them to build performance, or, or should I say, yeah, performance metrics. So, Miraj, I'm going to pass this over to you. So thank you, Vijay, for... Uh for the nice introduction and uh, detailed pitch on uh, Gigamon. Uh, it's quite uh, fascinating to see how uh, Gigamon is helping out uh, collecting data feeds from across various uh, data, data capture points within the uh, network environment, whether it is physical, virtual, or cloud. And that's very important for us because we need that data to build up the uh, customization on how the enterprises are government or semi-government or whoever the customer might be, they can utilize that data to build up highly sophisticated reports based on network performance, based on application performance, based on response time data and whatnot. So with that, I will uh, start uh, with, uh, with a short introduction of myself. My name is Miraj Muhammad and uh, I'm the performance management consultant uh, for Riverbed based out of Dubai. And, uh, just as a side note, me and Vijay, we have been very common friends for a long time now, and we know each other's technology, how it can uh, combine and collaborate in order to provide our customers the best and the breed of uh, the monitoring solution or the visibility solution, which you might be uh, expecting from a digital transformation project or any other migration project that you might have. So for uh, anyone who doesn't know about Riverbed technology, just as a brief introduction here, uh, we have been in the region for about 12 years plus now and um, constantly expanding across multiple uh, different countries. Uh, we have about 30,000 customers across the globe. That includes uh, many of our uh, NPM customers, uh, uh, which are majority of the banks, uh, the government services, uh, and, and a lot of them are, are moving across various uh, portfolios, including uh, either they are van optimization customers moving to uh, visibility part or visibility customers moving to van optimization part. So we cover almost like 99% of the Fortune 100 companies and about 98% of uh, Fortune 500. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we have been named as uh, the leader in uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant for NPMD, uh, which is Network Performance Management and Di Diagnostics, and as well for uh, the, uh, the other portfolios that we have. With that, I will uh, <clears throat> I will start uh, say uh, ba basically uh, during these unprecedented times in these recent years or months, let's say uh, there had been a surge within the organization that are going through digital transformation change, whether it is planned, unplanned. For instance, expansion of current businesses and multiple region offices or some, something like in this current situation where a medical emergency pushed organizations to leverage what they already have uh, something in a short span of time that will support their current businesses or workforce to continue the business function. Both requires change in technology, uh, methodology, and various functions uh, to align in order to work properly, uh, whether it is a planned move or unplanned move uh, in, in, in this current situation. The need for our organization to use the single data feed, as, as, uh, uh, as Vijay mentioned, and use it across multiple different technologies uh, which support security, visibility management, and troubleshooting. That is where Gigamon and Riverbed joins as forces to provide required information on data center traffic visibility, whether in cloud, virtual environments, or physical networks. Riverbed NPM uh, provides full fidelity view. So when we say full fidelity view, we say no sampling at all. We cover all packets, all flows, all 
performance data to provide uh, views across network flows, network TCP packets, application and tier dependencies with advanced security analysis, helping organizations achieve fact-based results rather than uh, assumptions or guessworks that extends the planning, validation, and scaling the organization's network and applications in terms of capacity, security, uh, and digital transformation, uh, as, as a matter of fact. We offer uh, the greatest depth and breadth uh, of telemetry, which integrates packet and flow data, and enabling high-scale uh, polling of CLI, SNMP, and WMI metrics, as well as synthetic tests for SAS and on-prem apps. This gives you fixed flexibility and multiple lenses to troubleshoot uh, performance issues that might arise uh, either from a network side of you or an application side of you, or maybe an, end, uh, maybe an end user who is sitting at a branch side or maybe working from home. These network metrics are also integrated with infrastructure level metrics, uh, making it easy to plan and extend your network, or uh, design or fix any issues that your current organization might be facing or uh, currently uh, uh, facing out in, in, the, in the digital transformation uh, project. Uh, well, uh, our network and IT infrastructure solution provides hybrid cloud support, helping you gain better control and performance in today's hybrid world. This is especially important for apps and resources uh, that are both on on-prem and cloud data centers, and especially if they are on, on Azure or uh, let's say AWS, where we have presence across multiple uh, cloud platforms, where the cloud consumption can cause, a, can, can, can create a, let's say, a, a kind of like an issue where the prices can do a skyrocket due to the applications using uh, N number of chatty uh, turns or chattiness uh, within the applications. Lastly, our uh, network performance management solution comes with an embedded security tool that offers advanced security analytics, threat analytics, uh, DDoS mitigation, and full incident forensics. This is particularly important in today's age of advanced persistent threats where you know, security plays a major role within the network and the uh, security operations team, whereby reducing uh, the impact of any security threat that might pose a risk to the enterprise, uh, uh, enterprise network or enterprise applications. And that is what uh, I believe Vijay had highlighted a, a, a couple of uh, minutes back where he emphasized on having visibility and security as a common platform between the network and operations team to work for the good of the organizations. So during the last three or four months, organizations have had a major paradigm shift in, uh, in workforce across on how they will work or do their job. The recent or current ongoing uh, medical emergency had put a major challenge to every single organization. And let me repeat, every single organization, whether it is small, uh, big, or small or medium enterprise, it doesn't really matter. But simply put, it is just the pandemic as if it has asked a question like, where will you work from? Whether you work from the office or from the home. It's by simply asking all employees to work from home. The reason, uh, the, the response now uh, to COVID-19 has had a major and long-lasting impact on enterprise ITs. The Fortune 500 alone has about like 30 million employees, and that's a lot of employees, and they were asked to work from home uh, almost overnight, and that, that, is, that is a major, major, major challenge. Not sure if all the enterprises have got the similar infrastructure or they have had any plans to scoop up with this particular uh, shift in, uh, in, in work from home uh, scenarios, but it, it has become a norm. Like uh, as per Gartner's uh, April 2020 executive pulse, 74% of the CIOs currently, they are planning to shift their workforce to, uh, to work from home remotely uh, until uh, the COVID-19 uh, surge subsides or maybe permanently shift them to home, home working scenario. So, well, which was the, the, the thing was like the work from home condition, which was supposed to be like uh, for three or four months, it is now going to be there for a longer run. And this requires a major shift in the enterprise uh, infrastructure, enterprise visibility, and how the enterprises are going to scale up with the on-growing workforce that is uh, currently utilizing uh, are doing their jobs from the work side. The expanding remote workforce adds another level of concern for the IT and business leaders who are relying on them to keep their teams productive. 
uh, well, there are certain facts to it, which is insufficient visibility. 67% of organizations are flying blind with little visibility into network and applications. Uh, they have unreliable information on performance management, uh, often caused by latency, chatty protocol, application bandwidth constraints, which causes remote performance issues. There is, again, lack of IT agility uh, due to network complexities because users can come from uh, 4G network, MPLS network, internet, VPN, whatnot. And then there is an uh, add-on challenge, which is coming from the expanded security risk. As more and more users are being added, uh, locations are being added, devices connect to work from remotely. In fact, if we look from one of one of the Gardner snap polls in March 2020, uh, indicated that 54% of the HR reported that their budget, uh, their biggest barrier to an effective work from home model is poor technology and infrastructure. It's not the user, it's, it's rather the technology that is going to support the shift of the user to work from home. So uh, with that, I will say a digitalization, uh, which we have been talking about for, for now some time, uh, has caused explosive growth uh, with applications, connected devices, and whatnot, uh, wherein networks are really hybrid. They are complex and combination of on-prem and cloud-based infrastructure Applications are again distributed, dynamic, increasingly delivered as a service, uh, which runs in data centers and clouds. Users can be, uh, again, very agile. They are mobile, uh, they are remote, accessing applications 24 into 7 from multiple locations and devices, which can be, uh, again, uh, geographically distributed or geographically uh, dispersed. So I, I might ask a short question over here, which is like, how can you achieve these goals when network packets are becoming a increasingly complex? The answer is pretty simple. For instance, uh, the, the applications are distributed, we all know that, and they are not in one place. They, are, they can be in cloud, they can be in virtual environment, they can be in on-prem system, and they can be uh, within which is, nowadays we have seen a lot of times, uh, the organizations are shifting from traditional switching network to software defined based uh, networks, which involves many different new technologies, and that makes it increasingly complex. So what Gartner did uh, in, in, in one of their releases in early 2020, they put within the NPMD magic quadrant a new model to include a network packet broker as one of the primary component of the network performance management and diagnostic data. So with that, we have the introduction of our new friends, which is Gigamon. So in here, what we are seeing is uh, Gigamon and Riverbed deployed in production uh, environment, whereby leveraging full features of SPAN, TAPS, ER SPAN uh, through Cisco ACI or cloud environment or whatever the type of deployment, whether it is uh, in cloud, on-prem, or it is going to be on the virtual environment. The data feed is collected, sent across to Riverbed solution, uh, which is our NPMD as flows, packets, and VXLAN for reporting on flow monitoring and application network analysis. And this is pretty much through a single feed licenses where Gigamon is actually helping us do a majority of shift on SSL decryption, offloading uh, of certain packets, uh, non-critical packets, uh, deduplication, and so on, whereby we receive the feed as clean, uh, right throughput, which helps in building the correct definition of applications or correctly defining the business-centric dashboards or reports required uh, for the user. So the question is, why choose Riverbed ultimately? So our unified network performance management solution is very unique. Uh, we collect data on uh, from across on-prem, virtual networks, hybrid cloud, and multi-cloud environments. We don't simply sample the data, as I said, uh, during my starting phase where we are not doing uh, the sampling type of data. We are doing full fidelity view, whereby we are selecting all packets, all data from the flow side, all device performance metrics, all times, and integrate them into a single unified portal for a cohesive view of enterprise performance. Riverbed, uh, by far, is the only vendor who delivers the depth and the breadth and scale of telemetry even in hybrid and multi-cloud environments, whether uh, uh, which is private cloud or public cloud. And we utilize the cross-domain uh, data analytics and threat intelligence to triage problems and prioritize them and suggest corrective actions uh, or corrective measures to the enterprise IT team to resolve performance issues. 
So in the last, I would like to highlight some of the uh, many use cases. <laughs> I will say some of the many use cases here because there are there are lot. There are lot. Uh, where in Riverbed and Gigamon have played pivotal roles in enabling customers uh, move smooth throughout the digital transformation or uh, any other project that they have. Uh, some of these which I just wanted to highlight is uh, monitoring the critical infrastructure of VPN users or remote access, including WAN links, um, understanding the balance of user search and bandwidth usage. So for instance, if we have the remote work from home uh, scenario that requires a major, uh, major increase in the bandwidth capacity, whether on the MPLA side or internet side or the VPN side. So the user, there is, there is always a balance between the increase in the bandwidth and the increase in the user. So we have this kind of monitoring available within the tool. Uh, we, we also support looking into the user experience using the deep packet inspection, which is again, part of the delimit, uh, part of the delivery that is done by uh, Gigamon as, as layer four or layer seven packets that we receive. And lastly, uh, we make sure your network environment is uh, secure uh, by identifying uh, uh, security threats using the advanced security model. So with that, I will say uh, we now have another poll question for you to answer. Yes, it's, it's here now, the poll question. What's yep. the most important priority for your company at the moment? Uh, Meraj, before we head off uh, into our discussion today, there's just been a question from uh, one of the attendees. They want to, you to go back to the slide before the Gartner slide, because I think they have a question based on that slide. Um, so I think in the time that you go back to that, uh, uh, maybe we'll, we'll start off the discussion. Um, and then we, he can see the slide and then ask us, uh, ask the question. Sure. So um, I'll start with you. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you both Vijay and Miraj. Um, and, and I think you've kind of covered this in a very broad way um, about how the pandemic has impacted the digital transformation strategies. But Vijay, if you can talk about the region specifically, where were we at before this? Where, you know, in terms of digital transformation and what has the pandemic specifically done? Like at which point were we at and where are we right now? So many enterprises or many organizations had, had pretty much already started this journey, right? You know, when I say started, they had a, a planned, phased approach for their digital transformation journey, which was going to be anything from two, three, four years. You know, it's not something which you can do overnight. It means a complete network um, infrastructure overhaul, right? So those organizations that had already begun this journey were mm -hmm. obviously in a position when this COVID-19 came around. It wasn't even the COVID-19, right? It was just a sudden strain on the on the internal networks for, for having to move the users outside of their organization. So now they were actually coming from the outside in uh, and, and that brought a, a, around lots of stress, lots of, um, um, you know, challenges on the network. And like I said, those that had already begun this were in a better position, but they were, no organization was ever ready for this, this sudden the sudden rise in numbers coming from the outside in. And then obviously the bandwidth constraints, um, you know, people working from home having to be in, in using the teleconferencing applications, um, you know, using all, all sorts of limitations that will now going to affect the network were coming into real, um, you know, strains from, for the IT team. Um, obviously a lot of the organizations have now adapted this new approach. Um, and if they haven't, they've definitely got it in, the, in their future roadmap, which is something which they need to keep at the top of their list so that, you know, should, should another pandemic come again, that there's going to be no surprise and, you know, unlike this one, which they never saw coming. So are they better prepared, do you think, now? Uh, or have they been forced to be better prepared, rather? Like I said, right, the, the COVID-19 or this pandemic, it, it sort of forced everybody. It was like a catalyst. It sort of accelerated the digital transformation journey, right? So what they were planning to do next year or the year after, you know, they had to bring their budgets in, or even if they didn't have the budgets, they had to use or make the best out of what they currently have. So they're definitely better prepared. There's still a lot of work to be done. It's definitely not over, even hmm. though, like I said earlier, you know, the IT organizations in, on, on, on the IT perspective, we think we're out of the COVID-19. We're still not out of it. There's still a lot of work to be done on the digital transformation journey. Um, one of the 
points you mentioned about how it's putting more strain i think one key element which we've discussed and i think even during the presentation both your presentations that came up is visibility and then the wider issue of cyber security how secure are your networks um there's been a lot of talk around it but uh, in reality where are we at like how big a problem is it and do organizations understand how big a problem it is is it the, the working from home right let's I, I can call it just working from anywhere it's not even home anywhere people can yeah. work yeah. on the beaches and not to where working from outside your original environment it, it's obviously put on a, a tremendous amount of strain on the companies on the infrastructures on their applications and what's happening on the cyber security side of things you know bad actors or, um, or malicious people are now trying to take advantage of this of this covid-19 opportunity um, and they're trying to now enforce themselves into the into the IT infrastructures, right? So obviously, remote security was was critical. You know, everyone VPNing in, remote security became top of everybody's list. You know, even though many organisations were still under breach. You know, you, you're you're still seeing a lot of targeted attacks from these opportunistic attackers who saw COVID nineteen as as something they could capitalise on, right? So. Yeah. In the network security from the outside in became number one priority. So, in terms of cyber security, are they well prepared? Well, they're better prepared now than they were before. Like I said, okay. still a lot of do, and still a lot of visibility required to ensure that the existing tool infrastructure that they have doesn't get overwhelmed and, and, and you know miss out these these malicious threats. Miraj, what is your perspective? What have you seen in terms of your clients? As as Vijay mentioned, uh, there has been an increase, uh, and and there are a lot of uh, malicious activities happening in and out using uh, the advantage of this current pandemic situation. So, for instance, uh, we have come into a situation where a customer uh, uh, whose employees are actually accessing multiple different sites. Uh, uh, around to, to do some personal chores and so on. And one of the key things that was brought uh, to our notice and we have seen is uh, there, there's a lot of malicious websites out there that poses like the actual websites. Right. So one of the users, what we have seen is uh, he was trying to access the bank's website saying it's a genuine one, what, but apparently when it was detected, it was a, com a kind of like a phishing website. So. Right. There are common threats like these that are arising. And as Vijay mentioned, uh, and, and it's 100% true that major, majority of these threats nowadays are secure, like SSL based. Mm, so people yeah. would assume SSL to be secure, but now right. it's, it's the form of attack. So like I would like to reiterate what Vijay mentioned is the, the enterprises better plan for the security now than to wait for uh, the next one year or two years. So. That's that's my uh, response to this. Um, one point I think, Vijay, you mentioned this in your presentation as well, and I think that's uh, which is there in the fore is that we have seen budget cuts. You mentioned about layoffs. You've talked about tight budgets. So in this kind of a situation, yes, maybe organizations understand how critical it is right now to invest in technology, but they don't have money. I mean, so. Is there a solution? What is your advice to them? How can can they manage right now with what they have? Absolutely, yes. And, and one word, if you remember, that I mentioned on a few occasions was optimize, right? Um, yes, that's the word, yeah, optimize. <laughs> work better with what you currently have. Like I said to you, a lot of organizations um, not only have gone through budget constraints or, or reduced budgets, a lot of them actually haven't had any new budget, you know, you know having to work with zero. Um, mm. And like I said, this influx of traffic um, is overwhelming to the tool. So these organizations, they obviously need to optimize their existing vendor tools that they have, right? Security tools, network performance management tools, application performance management tools, forensics, whatever tools that they have, they need to optimize them better um, to achieve this operational efficiency. And, and the only way they can do that, you know, they need to optimize. Visibility comes, it, it becomes crucial. Visibility becomes crucial because it allows you to see all the critical network traffic and remove the unnecessary traffic before sending it out to the tool so they can now start sure. working better. They can now start optimizing and, and, you know, doing what they should be doing as their primary function. Um, and it decreases the amount of workload or, sorry, the amount of, of, of demands and processing on, on the existing tools as well, right? So that, again, it reduces complexity. Um, 
And, and another key thing is, you know, it improves the team's environment. You know, the people that are actually there inspecting the traffic and, and you know, they're having to go through all of the reports and, and produce meaningful information. It makes their focus and efficiency a lot better because you need to have less resources to do that because we're filtering out and we're sending the right traffic to the tool. So, you know, optimize is the word to use. Work more with, with what you have. When you use the word optimize, we are right now still in a kind of distributed, uh, you know, workforce and for some for a lot of companies. How easy is it to optimize in this kind of a scenario where even for, um, you know, people controlling budgets, whether you're talking about CIOs, whether you're talking about, you know, your finance teams, everybody's distributed. There's too many things, you know, on your plate, basically, in a sense. So is there clarity on how to go about optimizing what you have? Budget constraints are, you know, they are, they have happened. People are not spending money and, you know, people have been told to work with what they have to optimize your teams, optimize your regions, optimize the workforce to operate better. Um, it's definitely going to make a massive difference to this as well. Um, Miraj, there's a question that's coming from GB Bajaj. He says, today's IT environment architecture, would DLT blockchain be best suited to it? I would be really glad to answer that one. Uh, in, in a very short way because you know that will take into a much larger technical discussions but yeah just to answer on that one yes we have seen a trend uh, uh, nowadays where uh, majority of the banks and financial verticals are now moving to blockchain technology as well as we have seen some government agencies now making use of blockchain so that that is mainly based on let's say uh, a complex environment and this is where it makes really uh, highly critical uh, in terms of where the traffic is going, where the traffic is coming from, uh, who is the source, who is the destination, what is the port, what is the destination, and so on. So yes, uh, as a part of the ongoing uh, uh, improvements within the visibility patterns, yes, this technology is relatively new, uh, where not many of them has yet deployed. But yes, we are in the part of, of uh, making sure this technology is supported in our portfolio as a part of visibility pattern. and. Uh, if if uh, if you agree, we can have another uh, uh, discussion or maybe a meeting to have much more discussed in details uh, with regarding this particular question of yours, and uh, we can uh, we can take it down uh, down the line. Thanks, Maraj. Uh, I'll come back to you with the next question. So, what are your tips if for companies, for especially companies in the region that are now? let's say they're starting on their digital transformation journeys. They have been forced in a sense to adapt to the situation, but let's say that they are now looking at a proper strategy for digital transformation. What are the tips you would offer to them? What should they keep in mind at any cost? One of the key things that we have seen uh, with majority of our customers who are embarking on the journey towards digital uh, transformation, uh, there are certain key points that they have taken into consideration uh, with the current unplanned uh, journey that they have for the pandemic, which is, as, as Vijay mentioned, uh, people started to use what they already have without investing with the lower budget or with zero budget. But at the same time, they are required to increase or decrease certain aspects, which is, uh, let's say, uh, to, to go up with, they are required to increase their bandwidth capacity to support the users working from home because ultimately they will be connecting through a VPN or whatnot. So this requires a lot of increase in, in the bandwidth and that makes a very drastic decision, uh, let's say, because an increase, and I have seen, we have seen some customers, they were using about anywhere between 400 Mbps capacity and they were moved to one GB and still they were running short of it. So that was an increase in, 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 in the workload as well as the users uh, with the bandwidth. So. This is a key in visibility and whereby using the visibility pattern uh, integrated with Gigamon and Riverbed, we can deliver you, we can, we can show the customers like what are the business critical apps the users are using actually to run the business. And what if they are entertainment apps, non-critical business apps that are consuming your bandwidth. So what, what the enterprises can do is they can simply offload that non-entertainment, non-business critical traffic to something different on a cheaper link than paying very expensive on the bandwidth that is required for the critical applications. So that's, that's how the visibility plays a key role in enhancing the uh, digital transformation journey. This is one of the use cases. And the, uh, the second use case is uh, we have seen a lot of times people moving out from 
uh, on-prem data centers to cloud environments hmm. and that is again very uh, very important use case because without having gigamon in cloud giving us the data about how much is the ingress and egress traffic the customer or uh, uh, the customer will not know that how much they are going to pay for the charges on the cloud side so that that's a kind of like you know strategies that a lot of times we have seen customers embarking on before they plan on to the next step i'll back up miraj 100% with what he said digital transformation itself it's it's not just about the technology you know it it plays a very big part but it's also about the people and the processes that you know work together to create logical or meaningful business outcomes so visibility is critical you know gone are the days where visibility used to be a nice to have it's critical to have visibility so as as you move in the digital transformation path you know with new digital applications as miraj mentioned you know especially on on the cloud infrastructure they're being built you know on this on this more complex infrastructures these infrastructures are powerful um you know you get new applications on the on these cloud infrastructures as you move to the cloud uh, adapt, adapt to the cloud um and they're more complex right it means they're more difficult to understand it's more difficult to monitor the applications it's more difficult to secure um and pretty much you know, it's difficult to manage all of that and and that's where gigamon really comes in right we're having a a visibility fabric you know you can really discover where the bottlenecks are occurring you can really help discover suspicious data flying out and and that how the quality of experience is for the end users is a lot of additional features that you can get with the visibility fabric so we need that to sort of provide the intelligence about the applications across these new complex infrastructures uh, and we just help you accelerate that that journey the floor is open now we have time for questions so anything that you have feel free to um, send across your questions and we'll take them live uh, as we wait another question that i had uh, which is i know we spoke about the new normal and the new tomorrow but uh, you know it it's that, that new normal is constantly changing right like the new normal is very hard to define anymore so how do you see digital transformation evolving as well it's not going to be the same what you decide today may very well be extremely different tomorrow so how do you prepare for that tomorrow is it possible to be fully prepared for the tomorrow yeah, the new tomorrow is probably the old yesterday which was probably <laughs> going to be the, the new today right so <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of steps that you can take right you know in, in order to be prepared and, and support your your network infrastructure and your business right uh and and the key thing is about maxim like i've kept keep mentioning maximizing what you have with existing resources you know and maximizing the roi of your existing tools but above and beyond that you know you can use gigamon's and i keep saying gigamon i i should be saying a visibility tool visibility fabric you know to filter out to slice to de use deprecation capabilities to prevent the tools from inspecting unsafe um traffic you know um using application filtering um to prioritize which applications you need to send from your your um public or your private or your virtual or your containers out to your tools that are inspecting you know, reducing reducing the amount of traffic that needs to traverse through the network out to the tools um you know have i have at points you know in terms of ssl decryption you know centralize your decryption you know that allows your tools to be you know get access to the decrypted traffic and you can decrypt it once rather than having to add additional latency and workload on the uh, on the tools that you have and, and again I'll mention it extend the lives of your existing tools by you know by limiting what they need to see and giving them only what you know what they need to do to provide the the the, the right metrics this is going to stay the same um you know for for time basically you're going to have some changes in that right you know you've got to implement some kind of plan you've got to map out what you have map out your assets maybe you know work on your uh, existing network traffic that you have maybe try and leverage metadata for visibility you want to try and understand the flows and the patterns what you know what's actually mm-hmm. happening what's going out to your monitoring and network tools so you can provide them you know a, a better insight as to what's happening in in, in the network you know maybe add policies or you know access control policies around the tools that you have so you know all of your legacy devices and the applications that can't really easily be isolated can be shifted over to this new complex infrastructure you don't want to get rid of them either you want to make the most of what right. you have and that's where the visibility fabric comes in and 
And it's all about monitoring, right? Set up a, a, and keep a continuous monitoring strategy. You want to be monitoring that network traffic. You know, you want to be looking for endpoint data. You want to be looking for uh, logging hosts. You want the mm -hmm. tools that can work with this data, analyze it quickly and you know, fast so that they can try and bring about these incidents and violations or whatever's happening to these policies that you've set up before. Make the tools work for you, basically. Make them work better for you. There's a question that's come in. How do you help on zero trust architecture? Vijay, start with you. For us, it's about inspecting everything from the inside out and the outside in. And again, that's where Gigamon comes in handy. Whatever is coming from your east, west, your north, south, whatever comes into Gigamon, we will be able to decrypt it. We can look at the applications, you know, just don't take anything for granted. See everything before it comes into your network and as it goes out of your network. So from, from our side, we absolutely look into uh, the same pattern, which is the source destination. Uh, just to add on that one, which is from where it is coming, where it is going, what is the port number, protocol number, how much they have consumed, how much they talked with uh, each other, what is the amount of data that they have consumed. And this is, this is absolutely very much necessary when it comes to uh, security analytics, because you might have, uh, for instance, you, the customers can, can have multiple different uh, environments, uh, applications mm. and servers, to be honest. Mm. And assume that one of the servers is authorized to port 80, but the next day you see port 81 being opened. That's a threat. Right. But it shouldn't be there. And that's where uh, we take the feed in from Gigamon to look into that specific change that happened on the network or on the application side, and we report it back to the user. So there is always a mix and match of what is being sent out, what is being received uh, in terms of security and visibility. They go hand in hand. And that way, that, that is exactly where uh, we play a major role when it comes to uh, providing visibility data. And we take the feed from Gigamon in terms of unencrypted, encrypted traffic to look into the offloading or look into the certificate uh, validations and so on. So that's that's part and parcel of uh, the same technology which uh, which we, uh, we we use basically. Uh, and 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 I believe uh, that's something which is already uh, Vijay has mentioned, which is the DPI, deep packet inspection, that is based on application signatures, and that is the same thing for us. I, I don't see any other questions now. It will just uh, maybe go back to the poll. Vijay, I'll take it, give it to you, hand it over yeah. to you. Let's see the poll results. Maybe what you were expecting, not what you were expecting. We can see what's come up. Okay. Have your network performance and security tools been struggling to cope? As, as we've reiterated, <laughs> you know, many, many organizations are having this as a top priority. You know, these tools are being over inundated and struggling to cope and, you know, overwhelmed. And, and, and this is where uh, visibility fabric will definitely, definitely play a massive part. Was there a second question? Yes. Yes. Here it is. Yeah. What's the most important priority for your company at the moment? Visibility, maximizing the tool's efficiency, keeping the cost down, visibility into encrypted traffic. Not as high as I thought, actually. I was expecting that to be slightly higher, but okay. And you can see again, all. all all questions pretty much have had some response in terms of how they would better like to handle that traffic before they get to the tools, enhance the return of investment on the existing tools, maybe have some visibility into the malicious traffic um, and, and the visibility as a whole, right? Yeah, visibility as a whole. But but it's interesting, like 41% is maximizing existing tools and keeping costs down. I think that's the priority. So we'll come back that's to your where comes in, right? That's where optimization of your of your tool set. I was going to say your favorite word optimization is going to come in now. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> so thank you for the polls. We actually have two winners. So the that wheel of fortune, we've picked out two winners. Um, <laughs> other winners' names here. So if you guys are still online, you will be receiving, I think we'll have your email addresses, you will be receiving a, a $50 Amazon voucher. I'm guessing you want to know who the winners are now, right? Um, yes. The first winner is Keith Matthews. Um, from Diva, and the second winner drums is, <laughs> is Rahul Rahul Sagathan from Al Jazeera Group. Brilliant! Congrats so to the winners. Yes. Brilliant. Um, yeah, I think that was really interesting and um, very very insightful from a lot of different ways. I think, and I think the last poll results really brought to light the issue that's there and how people are 
concerned with all of those factors. I mean, bringing costs down, um, having more visibility, ensuring that you know their networks are safe. So, um, any other questions you have, fe please feel free to send them across, and we'll send them to the panelists. We'll get them answered for you. Um, you will be able to access this entire webinar on our website, gulfbusiness.com. With that, we come to an end uh, to today's event. Thank you so much once again to our panelists, as well as all the attendees. We hope you found the session as beneficial as we did. Um, let us know any feedback you have, any comments as well, and keep following us on all our social channels. Um, thank you very much and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.